Hello future doctors. Welcome to Dipenism. I am Dr. Dipen Shah and we are discussing the unit of diversity wherein in my previous video we had discussed about kingdom plantae and so far we have reached up to the division pteridophyta. In my previous video I discussed about the life cycle of pteridophyta and in today's segment we are going to discuss about the four classes of the division pteridophyta. The four classes of pteridophyta have been characterized in a tabular manner so that you can easily memorize them. The first class of pteridophyta is known as Psylopsida. Psylopsida where as you can observe P is silent that is Psylopsida. The next class is Lycopsida followed by the next class that is known as Spinopsida and finally the largest class of the division pteridophyta is known as Teropsida. So these are the four classes of division pteridophyta. Psylopsida this is considered as the most ancient group of vascular plants as we are well aware that in the kingdom plantae the first vascular category has been pteridophytes because algae and bryophytes were non-vascular plants and even in pteridophytes the most ancient plants are from Psylopsida. Most of them are fossilized plants that means they are not existing anymore. Examples are Rhinia or Horneophyton which are fossilized plant but one of the genus which is still existing and some of the species are even fossilized which is considered as a living fossil. So one of the living fossil of this class Psylopsida is known as Psylotum. So this is one of the living fossil which is available. In Psylopsida plants most of them they have presence of rhizome. Rhizome means an underground stem plus they have scale leaf and there is presence of rhizoids. So this is the characteristic feature of Psylopsida. Moving to the next class that is Lycopsida. Now remember that the plants of Lycopsida class are commonly known as club mosses. So that is the terminology given for these plants that they are known as club mosses. One of the important member of this category is Lycopodium. Now remember that this plant Lycopodium has a very important use in making tonics and syrups for homeopathic medicines. So for homeopathic medicines Lycopodium plant is extremely valuable. Another member of this Lycopsida class is known as Selaginella. Selaginella the plant which is also known as bird's nest moss or it is also known as a resurrection plant. In fact, one of the species which is Selaginella bryopteris. This is considered as a plant which is Sanjeevani plant and Sanjeevani jadi booti ke baare mein to suna hi raega. Lakshman ji ke pran bachane ke liye Hanuman ji Sanjeevani jadi booti leke aate. So this is the plant which is Selaginella bryopteris, a very important plant having valuable uh, herbal uses as well. So this is about the Lycopsida. In Lycopsida, these plants have aggregates of leaf which are known as sporophylls and this sporophylls they form cone or strobilus. So cones or strobilus are basically cluster of sporophylls which are the leaves which are developing to produce spores. In fact they have presence of proper root, stem and leaf. So they have true root, stem and leaf which are observed in this plants. Moving to the next class that is the Spinopsida. Spinopsida are also in general known as horse tails. So these plants are considered as horse tails because of their characteristic appearance wherein the rhizome is present which is underground 
so they have presence of rhizome plus they have branched stem and even there is presence of cones or strobilus which is very much condensed also another characteristic feature of plants belonging to spinopsida is that in their epidermis of their stem and leaf there is presence of a particular element that is silica and because of the silicated surfaces of leaf and stem they appear rough and when these plant structures they collide with each other they are responsible for forest fire so forest fire is basically occurring because of the presence of silica in the leaf and stem of these plants one of the member of this category is equisetum which is also known as pipe plant so this is about the class spinopsida the last group that is pteropsida this is the largest class of pteridophyta so most of the members that we observe are belonging to pteropsida class in fact they are commonly known as ferns so that there is the terminology given to these plants belonging to pteropsida one of the characteristic feature of this plants is that their leaves they are much larger in size which is known as megaphyllus the word phyllo is related with chlorophyll that is a leaf mega means leaves are much larger in size so they are known as megaphyllus plants and the stem is comparatively smaller also some of the members of this pteropsida group is the azola plant azola is in fact an aquatic fern also this is the smallest fern available which has been used as even bio fertilizer the reason for that is the azola plant on its leaf on the dorsal lobe there is a shelter for a particular bacteria that is anabina anabina is a cyanobacteria which helps in nitrogen fixation hence the azola fern is a valuable plant because it increases the nutrient content of that respective environment so one member of pteropsida is azola another member is edientum edientum is also known as walking fern the reason for that is it spreads very fast through vegetative propagation and that is why it is considered as a walking fern where it spreads out in a large quantity other members are uh, salvinia or even terris or marsalia so these are the different members belonging to pteropsida so in detail we have discussed about the four different classes of pteridophyta and their respective examples these are the examples which are very important for your neat exams wherein a particular organism may be asked and you have to correlate with their life cycle which we have discussed in our previous video stay tuned for my further videos where we'll be discussing about the last division of kingdom plantae that is gymnospermae that's all from the penism thank you